Ah, hello, 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 and welcome to the Morning Man Sports Podcast, wherever you may begin your podcast from, SoundCloud.com, Google Play Podcast, Spotify, and now on YouTube. Guys, let's go ahead and get straight into today's show. It is a loaded one, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, guys, so today's main topic of discussion is Optic Crimsix is getting frustrated with, of course, the rest of the Optic Call of Duty crew during a scrim match on a Havantia, if I'm pronouncing that right. It was during a hardpoint match. On Dexter.com, they are the first ones to report it. Call of Duty veteran Crimsix has long been considered one of the best leaders in competitive Call of Duty, evidenced by his impressive 32 major event wins and is known for bringing teams to championship caliber as seen with the CWO Vegas at the start of the Black Ops 4 season. Things have not been clicking lately for the Optic Gaming crew. However, as during a recent scrim session versus Midnight Esports, Crimsix felt as if his team was being, as his time, excuse me, was being wasted after being unable to get his point across during a game of Hacienda Hardpoint in preparation for CWL London. Crimsix is not happy with the Optic Gaming practice. The clip shows Crimsix asking his team, do you understand what I'm saying? Referring to a moment earlier in the match where he criticized his teammates for making a bad decision. He was quickly cut off by teammate Seth Scump Abner, saying someone gassed me for the love of God after his high score performance on the map before Crimsix snapped at him, telling him to shut the, you know, bleep up so that he could get his point across to the other players on Optic. This caused Dashy to start laughing over Crimsix while he was speaking until Crim eventually had enough and decided that he was finished with Scrims and going offline. The clip was immediately shared to Reddit, uh, where fans gave their opinions on the situation, which unfolded between Optic members, and Crimsix also shared his thoughts on Scrim versus Midnight on the thread. The two-time world champ described that he felt that the team was seeing little improvement while scrimming on other t- on other teams. We aren't getting better or worse with scrims. He then went on to say that there was no point of playing as he felt not everyone was trying to use the time e- efficiently. If we aren't trying to get better, then what's the point of scramming? CWL London takes place on May 3rd and Optic have found themselves in one of the tougher pool plays, tougher pool play groups alongside 100 Thieves, Resolve City, and a Nemesis 6 in Group A. Many are hoping that the, fame, the fan favorite roster could turn things around and win their second championship of the year in London. Guys, this sounds really like Crim6 is, of course, you know, he's frustrated. And this also seems like Optic has just went money hungry a little bit. And why I say that is because I follow Optic on both Twitter and Instagram. And I mean, my my goodness, you don't see no kind of like, you know, skump t- um, top five tips of the day. Or, you know, you don't see nothing where it's like, you know, dashy or scump, you know, saying, look, we're trying to get better. Um, where we're going to co- consistently and, you know, you don't see that stuff on their Instagram or their Twitter handle. You don't, you, all you see is like sponsors and stuff like that, which is great. You know, get your sponsors, you know, out there, but at the same time, you need to be staying focused on what got you those sponsors. And to me, it seems like, you know, optic has become a little more money hungry in the certain in this certain situation and Crimsix is the only one that really wants to play hard and get these championship rings and 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 I wouldn't be a, a, a bit surprised if Crimsix asked for a release this off season and into the next Call of Duty title and says goes goes back to Envy or um, 100 Thieves, you know, wh- whoever may, whoever the team may be, I, like I said, I would not be surprised if Crimsix asks for a release from Optic because he is seeing something that we are not. 
And with that live stream on Twitch, I'll actually link it in the, um, on my Twitter handle for you guys to see the day of this podcast, which is of course today on uh Tuesday, uh, April 16th. And speaking of April guys, we are just friggin' days away from the NFL draft and I cannot wait. And also the release of the schedule, which is actually this week, if I'm not mistaken, the NFL could surprise us and release the schedule like the week after the NFL draft, I wouldn't be surprised there either. So we'll have to wait and see. So a lot of things are happening. And plus to the day of this recording on April 15th, the Falcons reported to the voluntary OTAs. And of course, Julio Jones did not show up. But fans, do not panic. Julio Jones never shows up to the voluntary OTAs. But he will most likely show up to the mandatory mini camp which if i'm not mistaken i think is in may 20th so really and i know a good month away month and like five days and then after that you know maybe we will get a contract uh extension for julio and grady jarrett but with grady jarrett i'm just unfamiliar with right now i mean I, i i'm not like unfamiliar with the character but with his contract extension that grady jarrett's wanting for like for aaron donald money Nobody knows right now, but Arthur Blank saying that they're going to be Falcons for life. I'm trusting that he's going to come through and make both of them happy, especially Julio Jones. Julio Jones is way more deserving of, you know, Antonio Brown money or Odell Beckham money. (laughs) But those are not the subjects for today. Uh, But my last very subject is Brock Lesnar gets in a verbal argument attack against Vincent Kennedy McMahon at WrestleMania 35 uh, this past month. Well, not this past month. Uh, just as, just a few weeks ago, actually. <laughs> and what I mean by a verbal attack is Brock Lesnar just really just started yelling and like just cussing Vince out. So, PW Insider reported it that Whenever Brock showed up at WrestleMania and he was late, like always, to any pay per view that he goes to, or even uh, taping a Monday Night Raw, that Vince McMahon is was trying to calm down Brock Lesnar and tell him that the women are going to main event WrestleMania. And Brock went on to say, "No, I'm going to main event WrestleMania. I'm the big shot around here. Nobody else." So basically, it's like, you know, he don't care about the women's like evolution in a certain situation. All it is is Brock, 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 Brock up in this like, you know, moment. And uh, Brock is not that big of a star. Please uh, DM me or something and try and try to convince me that he is the biggest star to ever just walk the face of the earth because he's not. Um, But anyway, so. Vince tried to keep telling him, no, we've done promise millions and millions of fans that Becky Lynch, Ronda, and Charlotte is going to be the main event. And Brock Lesnar then got into a conversation um, that almost resulted into physical fighting with Vince McMahon. And then, of course, WWE authority had to step in to retain the beast. Which is, you know, Brock Lesnar from actually hurting Vince McMahon. And then, um, and then Paul Heyman said, well, I tell you what, Vince, we'll just go on first and then we'll get the hell up out of here. Because if you ain't going to give us a main event, we're going to go ahead and get this over with. And, and believe this or not, but PW Insider said that Seth Rollins was scheduled to lose against Brock Lesnar. And then Brock Lesnar retains, go on to the next pay-per-view before Money in the Bank, which is, I think, the crown jewel, if I'm not mistaken, which is in early May, to drop the title to whomever the opponent may be at that time. But then Vince, of course, got very angry at Brock Lesnar and then got on, you know, of course, all the talent relations and uh, the referee that's already outside waiting on Seth and Brock 
and telling them, hey, look, uh, Seth Rollins wins tonight. I'm tired of Brock Lesnar, you know, all this crap. And so, in rightfully so, I think Vince done the right thing up in this certain situation. So, guys, that is all the time I have for today, but I sure hope you did enjoy today's podcast. I know it's relatively short, but I had to get those two main topics out of the way. And I and I do want to apologize right quick, guys, for not keeping up with much CWL and Overwatch League news. I just really haven't been that into it ever since. Really, DeFran left Overwatch League. I'm not sure. He ain't like left the Overwatch League in general, but... He's left like the main stage of comp play, if if I may just say that. And the CWL, you know, it's it's great, but it's not feeling the energy. But I'm getting back into the mo- in the momentum shift. I'm still rooting for Atlanta Rain, and I'm still rooting for Optic Gaming. But they definitely need to change to certain things around. And uh, and definitely, I'm going to try my best to keep up with more. Uh, like I said, more of the CWL and Overwatch League news updates and anything else that's going to regard the players or gameplay action. So guys, that like I said, that's all the time for today. I sure hope you did enjoy today's podcast. If you did, make sure to like to hit the like button on SoundCloud.com or wherever you may be getting your podcast from. Make sure to follow me for the latest sports information that surrounds you. I, Kamorgan, will catch you all later.